So for anybody that's never caught Ren Karagani streaming over on Twitch, teaching people how to play, whether they are Rich Campbell trapped in a closet or they are just somebody popping into chat asking questions, uh, there is a lot of information coming for you. But specifically, you get known for tanking, especially with your role in the Balance Discord, the optimization community yeah. for 14. Um, we talked about what tank to play first. Now, like, almost that's the first question but this is really the question that should have come before that but doesn't this is like what is tanking what is tanking from the standpoint of like i've never played an mmo or i've never played an rpg or more specifically i've never played final fantasy 14 um where do you start or even or even they have played another mmo but tanking in this game is just different sure uh, that that happens too where people will have a very big expectation where i don't need to do damage I just have to hold the boss, and however I move it, the team has to adjust to how I'm doing it, and they'll deal with it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not really how it works in this game. I mean, as as anybody who's maybe a little bit experienced with Final Fantasy XIV will already be able to tell you, um, every job in this game is a DPS. Some of them are going to keep you alive and heal <laughs> you while they're DPSing. Some of them are going to hold the boss and survive the onslaught of incoming attacks while DPSing. Sure. Uh, but everybody's a DPS. When you're tanking in this game, you have a couple of things you're doing. One, you are definitely driving the group because you are determining where the boss goes in most cases. Or in a dungeon, you are determining the pace at which the boss is getting pulled and the ads are getting pulled. Um, you are doing a mitigation rotation where you're keeping your defensives up so you do not die. What's and mitigation? the primary goal of that. So mitigation in Final Fantasy XIV is the act of using a button that will reduce damage uh, that is coming in. Maybe you have something like a defensive that will reduce damage by 20% for 20 seconds, okay. which is good. You're like, okay, so for this next period of time, I'm a little bit better than I was before. I'm, I'm not really going to die. Uh, there are also things called invulnerabilities in Final Fantasy XIV, where an invuln will prevent you from dying for a period of time, uh, usually with a caveat or a stipulation or a really big boon. Maybe you can't take any damage. Maybe you can't go below one hit point out of your 60,000. And those, those are caveats that each tank will have a unique trait with. Um, in addition to that, you want to make sure your defensives are used in a way that are not necessarily so that you don't freak out because you're probably going to get low more often than you'd like. Uh, the, the objective is that you take less damage at points where your healers are less stressed. Maybe there's a lot of incoming damage to the team and you need to be a little bit more tanky while they stabilize the group. Okay. Or maybe a mechanic is about to happen and everybody needs to operate around a function that's happening from the boss where, you know, you have you have Johnny misses AoEs over there and, and, and like Sally stands and fires over there and you have you know, you have like um you know, you have like <laughs> Benjamin Benedictions in the back just trying to heal everything up. I'm trying to come up with names here. It's hard. It's hard. Essentially, everyone's spread out. They're not in range for heals or anything, and they can't get to you. So you're like, what can I do in my power right now to survive for the next eight seconds before they can get to me? Uh, so mitigation is really important in those situations. Um, and there will be times where mitigation doesn't seem like it's needed at all. Maybe you're running something where the incoming damage is very light, or or your healer is being extra careful with you or other members of the team are using their tools on you so that it seems like you're just fine um and you're like okay great this is a game for babies i don't need to use anything <laughs> um and that will happen that will happen um, so learning your mitigation learning how to alleviate the burden on the rest of your team angle the boss in a way that your melees, so your, your melee DPS are going to have positionals where they need to hit the boss from either the side or the rear, which are called the flank and the rear. Um, they will need to do that. And in order to do that, they typically don't want you spinning the boss a whole lot. So you stay stationary. And sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, I am stationary. It's not a big deal. And you'll look and you'll see the person doing like kind of like a wiggle a little bit. <laughs> and they think they're stationary and they're not really moving a lot. But sometimes it could be enough. Sometimes it could be enough. You know, we talked... We talked before where, you know, you, you were leveling up Monk, right? And maybe you're like, I have I have a rear followed by a flank followed by a rear immediately. So I'm just going to stay on this one little line and just, you know, wiggle a tiny bit and I'll get my positionals. And then the tank just turns the boss and you're like, I'm going to punch it in the face. 
<laughs> right. Let's do this. <laughs> And, and for you, that might not be so bad, but for, for the melee player who just missed that positional, maybe that actually um, prevented them from continuing their rotation. Maybe it, maybe it just made them completely gutter their damage because it was a big button that needs to be hit. Um, so it's important that we position the bosses properly. So you're doing your damage rotation, you're doing your mitigation rotation, you're doing your positioning, and all of those are important um, as a tank. And, and that, will, that will ring true in any content you're running. So... Having played a lot of other MMOs, there is a phrase mm -hmm. called hate, threat, amnity. It's called a number of things, and it's basically what determines a monster's and enemy's likelihood of who it wants to target. Um, somewhere, invisibly in most games, there is a, a running list of who it hates the most. Um, you didn't mention that as a key part of Final Fantasy XIV tanking when you're targeting this conversation towards new tanks. That seems That's atypical correct. compared to MMORPGs. So here's the reason why um, I didn't give a focus on that immediately. Mm -hmm. In previous expansions, um, so we can call it aggro, enmity, hate, threat, whatever you would like to call it, the sure. likelihood that the enemy is going to attack you, as well as the order that it's going to attack other people in too, because that does matter in this game. In previous expansions, you had everybody working together to make sure the tanks were at the top and the other party members were below. Nowadays, you have a tank stance that you acquire before you've even gone into your first dungeon. You get it very early and you turn that on and you forget about it. it, it it's essentially, essentially you forget about it. It has a multiplier to every ability you do where your enmity will be spiked. Uh, so it's very difficult to lose hate and the only person you're really in danger of losing it to is the other tank in the, in the instance. If you're in a dungeon, you're by yourself, you're not really going to lose it. Uh, if you're with another tank and maybe eight player instance content, 24 player, etc., cetera, um, you might fight for aggro at points and you might have to do a tank swap at points. You have provoke, you have shirk. Provoke puts you at the top of the list with a little bit extra and shirk dissipates some of your enmity, gives it to the other person. And you're like, here, you take it for a bit. Um, although it's possible that when you use that, you're still just so far ahead that you keep it. Um, so tank swaps in Final Fantasy matter. In a lot of content, you won't have that happen. Uh, but if you get into the higher end content, you will. So typically by that point, you will have established aggro or have lost it at some point to something, and it'll have attacked something else by the time you get to your first end game raids. Uh, it is important. Keeping aggro is important, but it is easier now, I would say more than ever. And I would even go as far as to say that there are times where I've seen people complete savage raids where they weren't even sure how they kept it. They just had their tank stance on and just kind of hit the boss. And it wasn't an active factor mentally okay so as i learn these things mitigation sounds like i'm taking mm -hmm. a ton of load off the healers and i'm helping yes. them help me and if they don't help me i die and i'm the first one to die and then of course right after me everybody who didn't decide to wear armor because they play a different job dies in rapid succession usually so the whole party no dies. pressure no pressure um, just don't die or everyone else does no <laughs> stress don't die or everybody else does most of the time not always um not always. and then i'm trying to handle the pacing and the positioning so that the dps can do their job and kill it before it kills us sure. and then at the same time i'm doing a dps rotation um sure. as a new tank this sounds like a lot to manage I, I don't know all the content that well so i'm trying to learn it i'm trying to learn this this um dps rotation this order of abilities that do damage i'm trying to mm -hmm. pair the right mitigation with the right section but it's content i don't really know that well so i'm mostly just guessing based on context clues that's and then true. I'm doing all of this while trying to know kind of how much we can take or how little we can take so that the dungeon A doesn't take 90 minutes and B doesn't doesn't just kill us over and over and over because I'm pulling too fast. Sure. How do I how do I prioritize these things as a new tank? Because this seems like a lot. A lot of people get overwhelmed by what it would take Don't as a brand worry new tank. About it. Tell you what, forget about everything that I just told you for a second. <laughs> just do this one thing, okay? Just play perfectly. Just <laughs> Just okay. that one thing. That sounds like it's not so much now, right? Just one thing. You're good. <laughs> it can feel like a lot. It can feel like a lot. So what I recommend to players is uh, this game will will drip feed you your, your abilities as you're leveling, sometimes out of order. Uh, once you're ready to start tackling high-end content, uh, go hit. So there are things in this game called training dummies where you can have them either sometimes out in the open world or sometimes on uh, people's private estates where they have houses. And you can attack these dummies and, and you can practice your rotation. 
you can just hit a dummy for you know seven hours if you want and just get used to the buttons you get used to your offensive buttons and it will get to a point eventually you know some people can learn it in a day some people can learn it in a year and it, wherever you lie in between just know that you're not doing any better or worse than anyone else you are playing your game and you're learning what you can do and there's no pressure uh, go hit a dummy for a bit i promise it'll help you get to the point where it's a little bit less thinking to keep that going and then when you are in the instance content and you're fighting those end game bosses your rotation will be a little bit easier and your mitigation can be your focus so now you're like okay let's get our defensives going um this isn't so bad and, and in a lot of cases right you'll like you said you're just popping them randomly you know you're you're, you're johnny new shoes you're like all right what are we doing here this looks like this cast bar uh, that that looks pretty pretty evil sphere that that doesn't look good i'm gonna pop a cooldown right sure. and then it's like okay good it was a tank buster nice i lived or sometimes you're like oh that looks like that it's gonna really hurt me and you pop you pop that mitigation and then you're like oh it was a raid wide aoe and then after that you're like mustard bomb what is that and you just die and you're like oh <laughs> that was the tank buster and in those cases, it's not so bad because, you know, like we were saying, if you die, everyone else might too. But chances are you have another tank and they'll they'll take over for a moment. So you get to learn. You get to learn. And making mistakes is fine. Completely acceptable. If anyone gets mad at you for making a mistake, that's on them. It's not on you. You're learning. Especially if you didn't know, right? Let's say, Chris, you went into content for the first time. You got tank busted. You die, right? And you're like, I didn't know it was going to happen. <laughs> What do you mean? What do you mean it happened nine minutes into the fight and the boss is going to die 10 seconds later? Sorry, let's just pull again. And now everybody's mad at you. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. You just go again and it'll be OK. Um, it can feel daunting and it can feel like a lot. But as long as you're pressing something, chances are you'll be fine. As long as long as you're actively attacking with something, it can even be the wrong thing. As long as it's something. You're going to be fine. Very good. I, I think that's, I think those are the things that come up most often with kind of tank anxiety and tank fear. And as we look at new content coming out with not only the launch of Endwalker at the time of this recording right around the corner, but also the ongoing patches. So for people that Endwalker's Absolutely. already come out and they're just now watching this, like there's going to be more instanced content continually added to the game. And so there's Absolutely. always going to be times that there's the unknown and you know, it's perfectly fine to go into that unknown on day one as the tank. Um, nobody knows it. Uh, there will be that one snarky guy from time to time that like, ran you get it, off like, work right at five and, and they, they quit the moment you guys wipe one time on the day one trial. And it's like, how have you guys not seen the guide and run this 27 times? And you're like, dude, I just got home and logged in and I just wanted to see the fight. And I like running it blind because it's new and exciting and you can't undo the newness. And I just wanted to try it's it. True. And if I got stuck, I'd go watch the guide after. That's totally fine. Um, that's totally fine. I think, I think I, the only I, I thing saw, I would I add brief is story. expectations. Go ahead. E expectations are big. Actually, this touches on the story. Uh, there, was, there was a fight that came out and it was Diamond Weapon. And an hour and 10 minutes after the server came up, there were people posting party finders saying, no, the fight, watch the guide. There were no guides. And people were making party finders saying, no, the fight, watch the guide. Like three mistakes and disband. And how ridiculous does that sound? The server's been up for 70 minutes. What guide? <laughs> Which the server goes live at like three in the morning. So like, heaven forbid somebody wasn't like sitting there clicking submit, 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 submit. <laughs> like, yeah. Standing yeah. in front of the quest giver. Like, I went and saw the patch notes, and I happened to have logged out exactly right there. I'm going to push escape <laughs> through the quests. In we go. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to tell you, as far as expectations go, if you're stressed and you're anxious, maybe you're maybe this is already on Walker when you're watching this, and maybe it's already 6.1, right? And we get a 24-player alliance raid. Mm -hmm. um, and that's your catch-up. You know, maybe you started the game, and you're like, how do I get up? And people are like, oh, just, just run the alliance for gear, and you'll you'll get caught up and go to Savage. And you're like, well, I'm going to tank in front of 23 other people. This is that could feel more stressful to some people than running an ultimate. Um, and that's OK. That's OK, because they need you. They need tanks. I can promise you there's going to be some DPS who's been sitting in queue for like an hour. They're just, they're just going to be thankful you're running at all. And if you're anxious and you're stressed, I can almost assuredly nine times out of ten say that you are making it feel more responsible for you than anybody else is holding you accountable to um 
chances are that people are just going to, you know, you're going to get in there. Maybe you'll die. Maybe you won't. They'll just res you. You'll be okay. But if you're stressed, that is all you. Just picture everybody in their damage downs. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's it's not too bad. And, it, it, and, and that's easy for me to say. It really is because I've never felt that anxiety. Um, so I understand that it could it could feel really hard coming from me. But I'll tell you what, I make mistakes too. And when I make mistakes and people are like, but Rin's supposed to be a really good tank. He sucks, right? It could be really embarrassing. But it shows that everybody makes mistakes, that we're all people playing a video game together at the end of the day, right? Whether it's, whether it's Chris who's showing me up or whether it's me who's showing Chris up or whether we're both dying on the floor at the same time, right? Every day is going to be different. Every day is going to be different. You know, maybe Chris is about to take a tank buster and his lovely wife came in to ask him a question and he looked away and he looked back and the buster was already finishing and now he's dead. And now people are like, wow, he doesn't know how to tank. And they can't see him on the other side of the screen. Things happen. Maybe your dog is barking. It's don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Just play. <laughs> just play the game. Well, good. Well, speaking of just playing... If it is daytime, I am probably live on Twitch on weekdays. If it is nighttime, Rin is probably live on Twitch regardless of the day. Um, so come say hello. Come ask questions. We are happy to have you. Hopefully you are in the middle of enjoying Endwalker. Yes. <laughs>